demonstration for the rich food. And the product which I am going to make is brioche. Brioche is from France. Uh, it's a rich dough which can be used for many other purposes also as we can make many other products out of this rich dough. Now the ingredients for this rich dough are here I am going to take 250 grams of flour then we have 15 grams of fresh yeast we have 30 grams of sugar can you see the sugar? grain sugar 30 grams then I have 50 ml of milk I am going to use 2 eggs and I am going to add salt. And last but not the least, I am going to add melted margarine or butter. You can use butter, but today we are going to use margarine, which is 50 grams. I am going to need water also. I have kept 150 ml of water, but obviously I am not going to use all of it because if you calculate, normally we say for 250 grams of flour, you require about 150 ml liquid approximately. Now here I am going to add 2 eggs which is about 100 ml Then 50 ml of milk which is which makes it 150 ml So you can imagine how much of water is going to be required Very little The dough has to be a very soft dough Now the only difference here today what we are going to do is The margarine is going to be added after the first fermentation So what we will do is we will make the dough without the salt and the margarine or butter we will allow it to ferment because it's a rich dough. We are helping the yeast uh, to produce more carbon dioxide to multiply. And then after the first fermentation, at the knockback stage, I'm going to add the melted margarine and salt. Now this dough uh, which we are going to make, which is a rich dough, can be uh, used for many other products also. For example, if you put in a bread mold, then it is called brioche nanke. If you put it in the Daliol mold, which is a which is a deeper version of our patty tin, then it is called brioche musselini. And if you uh, put it in a uh, patty tin like this, we will call it just plain brioche. So shall we start now? Then make a well. You can make your hand and just make a well. Now in the well, we are going to add yeast. Then we are going to add sugar. 30 grams of sugar, 15 grams of yeast. This is grain sugar. Milk. And egg. There is no need to beat the egg separately and add. Just add the egg. So we just start mixing all these ingredients. Make a paste. After you have made a paste like this, start getting in the flour. Do not use the dough scraper in the initial stages of making the dough. Afterwards, we are going to use the dough scraper. You see, I am just using my right hand now. After the dough is made, I will require my left hand also to knead the dough. As mentioned before, I kept some milk aside. I am going to add all that milk now. Not use a drop of water as yet. Maybe I might require a little bit. Now everything is come together. Now I am going to use my left hand also to knead the dough. See that you clean up the table. Now both my hands I am going to knead. Can you see the texture? And you see the texture? Look at this. It is not smooth at all. I am going to knead it so that the whole texture becomes absolutely smooth. So, here I go. Apply all my all the pressure. All my strength. 
I'm going to require some more water which I'm going to add. This may be about 15 ml of water. more water now oh, I'm going to take use of the dose paper and this in my hands and get the dough together Now, can you see the dough has started sticking to my hand? That means the dough is ready. I don't have to knead it anymore. I'll just bring everything together. Remember one thing, the softer the dough, the better the texture of your product. Now, some of us find this a little difficult to handle. Why? Because it is very, very soft. With practice, you will be able to do this. Now, can you see the texture of the dough? What I showed you initially. And look at it now. So nice. Soft, absolutely. Now, this is done, okay? Now, what we'll do is we'll just round it again. If you find it difficult, just dip your hand into the water and round it up. Make a nice tight round ball so that all the carbon dioxide remains within the dough. There you go, it's ready. Now what we'll do is we place it on a tray and we will keep it covered with a moist cloth. Okay. To make a coffee mousse, we have to first prepare a creme amelie and then of course the other ingredients will be added to the creme amelie. Now what are the ingredients which are needed? To make the sauce, which is also called the vanilla custard sauce, we are going to require two yolks. We are going to take the yolks, so here we have two eggs. Here we have 60 grams of grain sugar, 60 grams of grain sugar and 300 ml of milk. We also have vanilla essence here which we are going to add to the sauce. And then to make the mousse, we will require since it's a coffee mousse, what we have done is we have taken less coffee and we have added some water to it. It's quite thick which is like a decoction. To set the coffee mousse, we require gelatin. So here we have gelatin granules and last but not the least, we are going to fold in the uh, rich topping. Okay, so this is whipped and kept. We will just fold it in our clothes. So this, this is what we need to make the coffee mousse. Now to prepare the um, coffee mousse, the, uh, the tools which we require are we will need a bowl here uh, because it's an induction uh, gas. We are going to use this kind of a vessel here in which we are going to cook the uh, creme amelie. Here, this is just a bowl to whip up the egg and the sugar. Now we have kept a papa mold for the gelatin and we are going to soak the gelatin and then put it in a hot water bath which we will again show you later. Then uh, this is uh, the wooden spoon, uh, spatula, a whisk, then we have a, a set of measuring spoons to measure our gelatin which has to be measured accurately and last but not the least we need a soap strainer to strain our uh, custard. Okay. So let's start now with the actual making of the creme amelie. Now what we are going to do is whenever you start 
are making any of the mousses or wherever gelatin is required, first we have to soak the gelatin. So that is what I am going to do right now. Soaking the gelatin. Gelatin, the gelatin which we are using is in a granular form as just shown to you. So I am going to take 10 grams of gelatin which is 2 tablespoons of gelatin here. Then what I am going to do is, I am going to add 4 to 5 times amount of water here so that the gelatin gets soaked and swells. Now I uh, will start measuring the water, I am going to add 1, 50, 40 and 45. A little more that is 50. Okay? Five, 4 to 5 times uh, the amount of water is just right. After that, I am going to just mix this like this so that all the granules are exposed to water and slowly you will find that they will swell. They will absorb the water and they will swell. Now I keep this gelatin for about 10 minutes and then what I am going to do is I want to uh, dissolve the gelatin. I can't put this gelatin directly the bloom gelatin, I cannot put it directly into my creme amie or vanilla custard. So what I have to do is, I have to dissolve the gelatin. To dissolve the gelatin, what I am going to do is, I am going to take a tin like this and I am going to put some water here. And then, after about 10 minutes, I am going to put this bloom gelatin into, into the water here and I am going to keep it on the flame, on a slow flame. I cannot keep it for about 10-15 minutes till my creme anglais is ready and you know all those things. I have to take it out after about 7-8 to eight minutes because I do not want any skin formation taking place on the gelatin. So I have to keep an eye on my gelatin also. At the same time I have to look after my creme anglais. After about 7-8 to eight minutes, take this up the hot water and allow it to stand on your table. Now if you go abroad or any of the hotels, People, some people do use sheet gelatin. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to first to start with the creme and I am going to first put the milk for boiling. I do not want the milk to come to a boil. We call it scalding temperature. Scalding temperature is 83 degrees centigrade. So I just want to heat up the milk a little bit. That's it. Okay. So we start here. I am going to keep an eye on the milk. And here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to break the eggs, the egg yolks and sugar, and I'm going to whip it up. I'm going to add the sugar, 60 grams of sugar. Okay, now what we have here is, we have two yolks and grain sugar. They're going to leave the bowl like this. What's happening is, egg, uh, so grain sugar is hydrophobic. So immediately it will start absorbing the moisture from the egg yolk. So therefore, it, uh, you have to start mixing it right away. Now I am going to whip it for some time. Then it becomes a little frothy. This is an important step. We have to do this properly. Remember, this vanilla custard is a very delicate sauce. Okay, most of the time, you will find that it is cooked over a double boiler. So today, we are going to cook it over direct heat. So you have to be very cautious. Now, can you see this? I have beaten the eggs and the sugar like this. And once it becomes a little frothy, I am going to add the hot milk here, which is, I told you, at about 83 degrees centigrade. Now uh, we are adding hot milk to this because we want to reduce the actual cooking time. So therefore, very carefully you can add this milk, it's called temporary. So little by little you add the milk. First add a little bit and mix. And then you add the balance. Now, can you see a lot of froth here? Can you 
going to heat it up. So I am going to put this back into the pan and heat it or cook it. From here I am not going to use a whisk. I will need a wooden spoon. So I will use a wooden spoon here.
As you can see, I have greased two patty tins. I have greased two patty tins here. We are going to make 12 brioches, so therefore I have greased two. Now, if you can see, my dough is fermented, doubled in size. Be very careful, don't rip off the duster. And if it is stuck to your dough, just apply a little bit of water, pat in the water and immediately the dough will, uh, the duster will come out. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have, I've made the margarine here, as I mentioned before, you can take butter also. Then we have salt here, I'm going to put the salt. Now these brioches, you can make them sweet, as in sweet, as in you can have it at tea time or you can have it for breakfast, then you can add Vanilla is as serious. Now this normally in the Claudia we have it at lunch time. We have it in the soup and main course. So therefore, do not add it any vanilla essence. After you add it, uh, you put the salt here. I'm going to pour the milk or the <coughs> margarine. After that, we are going to pick up the dough with the help of a dough scraper, not with your bare hands. Can you see this? I'm just going to lift up the dough here. And turn it upside down. And then I'm going to slightly just punch it, knock back stage. And then slowly I'm going to incorporate the melted margarine and the salt into the dough. Here you could have cut this dough into small pieces. Whichever is convenient, if you want to cut it into small pieces and incorporate, you can do that. Or you can incorporate the full dough into the margarine. Again here, we are going to apply a lot of pressure. Then get everything together, clean your hands with the help of a dough scraper. No rubbing your hands together, use a dough scraper. Take your own time, but see that you get it right. Or can you see there is no margarine or butter or whatever here, nothing is there, everything is gone into the dough along with the salt. Now we are going to spread this dough and cut it into 13 pieces. Difficult to spread out because we have not relaxed the dough, I just kneaded it, the dough is not relaxed so it is difficult to stretch it out. Because the gluten has lost its elasticity and it's all come together. There you go. We will divide it first mark it. I am going to take out the 13th portion which is going to be a cap on the dough. Which is, this is the 13th portion which I am going to keep separate. And then I am going to divide this into 12. First we will do the marking. There you go, 12 portions. Now cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's draw the next. Twelve pieces. Twelve pieces. That's it. Okay. Now what we will do is we will round up each portion. Okay. Now 
Now here, sometimes we find it difficult to round up. So what we can do is apply a little fat here and then you can round it up. Okay, I will just take a little fat. And add it round it. Now when we are rounding, you have to see to it that the, there are no cracks in your rounding. It should be absolutely smooth. Can you see this? This has to be like this. Now I'm going to round up all 12. Now I can see that this one is slightly smaller, this is slightly big. So what I'll do is I'll just take out a little from here and I'll portion it here. Now whenever you're doing this, as in dividing and making them of the same size, never put it on top, always put it underneath the dough, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the final rolling and put it directly into the patty tin. I told you the patty tins are grease and kept. So we will start rounding it up. If you want to use fat, you can use some oil to use your hand. But it is very important that you get a nice smooth ball. Last one. Clean up the table. Here we go. Last one. Now what we will do is we are going to take the thirteenth one, which will be on the side, and we will. Cut it again into 12 small portions. Now, 13, uh, the 13th portion I am going to divide into 12. Not a very big portion on top, otherwise it's going to tilt and fall. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and I'm going to make a slight depression there. Go right down. Your finger should touch the patty tin. Now this small portion, we will just round it up and place it on top. I 
the dough is fermenting and then after this once we finish with this what we will do is we are going to keep it in a warm place between say 28 to 32 degrees so that the yeast the dough ferments now this is a rich dough so it's going to take a little extra time not the usual time which is taken by the lean dough okay so for a lean bread maybe it might take 40 to 50 minutes this might be an hour or so it all depends on the environmental temperature, how warm it is on the outside. So we try to protect this by keeping it in a warm place. There we go, this is the last one now. As you can see, we have put the caps. Now we are going to glue it, okay? Now, as you can see, the uh, creme amelie has become thick, viscous. Now, today mm. what we have done is we have kept it over a bowl of ice. You can also keep it in the fridge. But one thing you must remember that you have to keep an eye on the custard. We do not want it to set. We just want it to become. Can you see this is? Can you see this is thick and viscous? Sir? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the pot, uh, the ice. Do 
will get about uh, 7 to 8 of these ramekins. After that, what we will do is we will set it in the fridge for about 1 and a half to 2 hours. They have come out of the oven. Can you see the color? Now, color. Now, the color is just bad. It's done. Let me just take out one and show you the color. Can you see the color has to be light brown here and dark shade on the top. I am just going to break open one which is not the right thing to do but I just want you to see the texture. They are absolutely weightless. Can you see they are weightless. Now I will just break open one. Can you see the texture? Just have a look at the texture. It's so light, so open. So you can imagine how good it's going to taste and feel when you are eating it. Moose was in the fridge for about an hour and a half and it has set. Now what we are going to do is we are going to garnish this with the rich topping. Okay, I have put the uh, rich topping, the meat in the piping bag with a big star nozzle and uh, I am going to just make a swirl. That's about it. Okay. Then we allowed it to set, then we added the coffee and the 